Hey guys, my name is Shelby Bronner and I'm an extension specialist in the State 4 H office in Tennessee. And today I want to take a few minutes to tell you about shelf cooking and walk you through some of some kitchen um, staples that you could have in your pantry, freezer, and fridge at any time of the year, whether there's a pandemic or not. So just to start off, uh, what shelf cooking is, it's using what you already have in your pantry, your fridge, your freezer, before you run out to the grocery store and start just buying random ingredients. Um, this is also, you know, a part of meal planning, um, planning at your meals for the week or two weeks, however often you like to grocery shop and buy your supplies for um, cooking your recipes. And this also saves you time um, for each night cooking dinner and not trying to find um, a recipe last minute and then realizing that you don't already have those ingredients on hand, having to run out to the store, um, and you know, you end up spending more money and more time because you're constantly running to the store instead of planning your meals out around what you already have on your shelves. Um, so you can look for really great websites and resources that are already out there. If you, for example, had some chicken in your fridge and maybe some broccoli um, and you knew you wanted to use those two ingredients up, you can go to a website called All Recipes. That um, It's a re recipe website, but you can have um, chicken and broccoli as your keywords and it will pull up the recipes that use chicken and broccoli. And so then maybe you find a new recipe and there's one or two things that you don't have. So when you go to the store, all you need to buy are those two extra ingredients that you didn't have on hand. You're using up that chicken and broccoli that you already had. Um, rather than doing a whole different recipe that you've never done and you have to buy all of the ingredients new, um, this also helps save money and time, like I already said, but also being less wasteful, um, you know, using up what you already have on hand and um, in stock. So now um, I want to start off by walking you through some staples that you can keep in your fridge and your freezer and different ways that you might can use them. So a couple of things that I always like to keep on hand in my fridge is milk. Um, this can be used for baking and cooking and you can just use this endless ways of course drinking. Um, you know you might prefer almond milk or coconut milk or something of that nature and that's perfectly fine too. Um, I also like to use heavy whipping cream um, you know besides using this and pasta and casseroles and those types of things you can also make your own um, homemade whipped cream. Um, um, it's very simple. You just use exactly this and maybe some vanilla um, to flavor it up a little bit and just whip it until it's nice and fluffy. Sour cream, this is another one you can use in casseroles and soups. Also, if you have um, tacos or um, a recipe where you kind of like to use it as a topping, that's another great option to have on hand. Um, eggs, these, of course, you can use for cooking and baking, um, and there's just endless ways that you can use eggs, but it's also a great protein-heavy um, filling um, ingredient. It, um, you know, scrambled eggs, even as basic as that. You can make breakfast burritos. Um, you know, you can just use it to kind of uh, make your meal more filling. Um, some other things, um, cheese. Now, whether this is block cheese, shredded cheese, um, Parmesan cheese, once again, this is another one that you can use in all kinds of recipes, but it's also a great thing to have on hand for just snacking. Maybe it's cheese and crackers, or you're making a sandwich for lunch, or something of that nature. Um, cheese is something that's always great to have on hand. Cream cheese, this is another one of those, whether you are making a dessert um, and baking, or if you're making a casserole or something of that nature, it's another great thing to have on hand, and there's many great ways to use that. Um, butter, um, I mean, I feel like butter is on almost everything, so I always like to have some butter on hand. And then um, bone broth or chicken broth, chicken stock, um, something of that nature. I do like to keep some of this on hand. Um, and of course, if you hadn't opened this, this would be in your pantry. But I also like to keep some bouillon cubes as well. Um, and that you can just add water to and pull it out of your pantry if you don't have any of this on hand. Um, also, just some classic condiments, um, you know, mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, whether you're eating those on a burger or a hot dog um, or with a piece of meat 
or if you're using these kinds of things and maybe tuna fish or potato salad, pasta salad, those types of things, it's always great things to have on hand. Um, some other just veggies pulled from the fridge, just kind of like to have options as side dishes that could also be cooked, um, you know, into a sheet pan meal or casserole. So um, carrots, zucchini, Brussels sprouts, cauliflowers, just kind of what I've pulled out right now. Um, you can always, there's just so many ways you can make this very versatile and always have some veggies in your meal. And then some things from the freezer. I um, always like to keep some bacon on hand. Of course, that could be in the fridge too if you plan to eat it soon. Um, chicken, you can buy larger packs of chicken, um, you know, to reduce the cost a little bit and then break it up into the sizes that you need. So, got chicken on hand. Um, ground beef or ground turkey, just keep that in the freezer. Um, of course, just having a protein on hand. Um, frozen fruit, you know, that's great for smoothies, for eating, for baking, whatever, just so you have some. Um, some frozen veggies, so I've got some corn and some peas. Um, once again, adding those to casseroles or soups, um, having them on hand and being able to cook. And then something else is having um, some type of bread in the freezer, um, pita bread, naan bread. You can freeze regular loaf bread, um, and you can make your own homemade pizzas. You can make um, sandwiches, um, you know, baked Italian sandwiches with sandwich meat and cheese. So there's endless opportunities there. Okay, so a couple of things to keep in the pantry for baking wise, always having baking soda on hand and baking powder. You can make many things with those. Um, always having vanilla extract, um, chocolate chips is a great thing I like to have on hand. Um, and then in my containers, I have just regular granulated sugar, some flour, and then some powdered sugar is kind of some of my baking staples. Um, and then for canned good wise, just having some kind of vegetables on hand, whether you eat those by yourself um, or you put them in a casserole or soup or something like that. Um, beans, you can stretch you know, your, your food very far with different kinds of beans. So um, I usually like to have black beans as well, but I'm out of those. Um, cream of chicken and cream of mushroom, those are good in soups and casseroles as well. Um, and then for tomato wise, diced tomatoes and crushed tomatoes. And I personally like to use crushed tomatoes in making my own spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce instead of having pasta sauce on hand. And to be honest, this um, is a lot cheaper of a can. And if I don't use it all, um, you know, if I just need like a marinara dipping sauce, you can always freeze it and pull it out and thaw it out um, if you need some for later. If you like to have a little bit of canned fruit on hand just to have it, um, to be honest, most of the time I use canned fruit um, for making desserts and that type of thing, but you might want it for, um, you know, just eating out of the can as well and that's fine too. Um, some other things that once, yes, these are open, they would go into the fridge, but mince to garlic. Um, I do have garlic powder on hand, but this gives it a good little flavor and I don't have to cut garlic um, freshly all the time. Parmesan cheese is another great one. Um, having salsa on hand, um, whether that's putting it um, on, a, you know, top of a recipe like tacos, um, taco salad, that type of thing, or um, making a recipe with salsa. And then other sauces like barbecue sauce and then um, vinegar, um, salad dressing, and those types of things can just be added to a protein that you maybe throw on the grill or in the oven um, or make a salad um, just to give it a little bit of flavor. And then, of course, having some different types of pastas and rice. Um, so, just showing you a few different options here. Um, you can, of course, bulk up any meal or soup um, with rice and pasta and kind of stretch out your protein and your vegetables a little bit farther. Um, and there's, you know, many different casseroles. And then, of course, basics of spaghetti um, and those types of things that you can make with pasta and rice if you have on hand. And then some other things um, that I just like to keep on hand that are very filling um, that can be used in many different ways is peanut butter and oats. Um, oats can be used maybe you just want to eat oatmeal for breakfast you can make your own um, granola bars you can use this for baking purposes making a bread you can make a flourless type of pancake um, with bananas and oats and then peanut butter of course you could eat it with celery or apples you can use this with baking um, you know you can make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches so it's pretty versatile as well um, and these are both very filling um, ingredients to keep on hand 
And then just a couple of other things, more so spices, but just some basic spices, basil, pepper, oregano, chili powder, garlic powder, um, cumin, red pepper, paprika, onion powder, and then um, cinnamon, some yeast, and I had mentioned chicken bouillon cubes earlier, salt, um, just those basic seasonings. You can make just about anything, um, whether you're making chili or taco soup or tacos um, or spaghetti or your own marinara sauce um, or, you know, you're baking and making, uh, maybe you're making homemade oatmeal and those types of things. These are just some kind of basics I like to keep on hand. And then for cooking oils, um, besides butter is avocado oil and then olive oil. Um, those are just my preferences of oil and they, um, avocado oil has has a high smoke point um, and olive oil is a little bit lower but those can be used in um, your recipes and with cooking as well.